you to know that your days of being faithful and fruitless have come to an end. For the glory of the Lord has risen up on you. Good evening, afternoon, my brothers and sisters, wherever you are viewing from. God bless you once again. Welcome to another session of Measured Faith. Amen. God bless you and thank you all for joining me on this Tuesday evening, afternoon, as you all so faithfully do. As you come in, let me know that you are here. Say what's up. How you doing? I hope you all have, been, have had a blessed day thus far. Um, if I yawn a time or two, please forgive me. I am tired. <laughs> I actually made a vow that I was going to start back working out. I hadn't been hitting the gym like I wanted to, but yesterday I had like, two or three classes. Then I had to, I had to a, a, a Zoom meeting afterwards, and so um, after last night, I just. After the Zoom meeting, about nine something, I went in my garage and jumped on the treadmill and got me some dumbbells and started working out. So that was my first workout, really just working out. And I don't work out that late. So, yeah, your boy's a little tired if I yawn um, a couple of times. Y'all forgive me. Hey, Deidre. Hey, Sandra. I seen a couple of you all chime in already. Thank you all for joining so promptly. Let me know how you're doing in the uh, in the chat. In the comments, let me know how I can pray for you and stand in agreement with you all. I am praying over measured faith, um, prayer list daily and lifting you all up. I am praying over um, 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 prayer request Thursday daily, lifting you all up. When I um, 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 ask you all to let me know how I can stand in agreement with you, I am not just doing that to get comments or just to, you know, sound like I care. I really do care and I really do pray for you all and stand in agreement um, with you all. And I'm praying that God would meet you at your place of supplication. Hey, God bless you, Minister Brown. Good to see you. Hey, Sister Casper, God bless you. Thank you all for joining. Hey, Sister Patrice, God bless you. Thank you all for joining. Y'all come on in. We're got some good stuff, some good meat tonight. We're going to jump in. Let me again, let me know how you're doing. Let me know how I can pray for you. If you're doing good and everything is well, praise God. Praise God. If you're doing good and everything is well, to God be the glory. Just uh, um, um, put it in the comments, you know, all is well. If it could be better and you need prayer, just just say, um, to God be the glory. Say, but could use some prayer. Amen. We want to give God the glory in all things, whether we are base or abound, whether we have much, whether we have um, um, little, whether whether we are going through, coming out, or or have the victory already, or, 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 or struggling trying to get there, we always want to give God the glory, amen, because he is worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and of all the praise, amen. Share this video if you would, tag somebody, tell them we are live right now with measured faith, and we are getting ready to dig in, amen. Let us pray right quick. Lord God, we come before you once again, hallelujah with an attitude of gratitude, just thanking you for being all that you are. Thank you for doing all that you do, have done, and are going to do. We thank you, Lord God, that you brought us together collectively to break bread once again, to study your word, to practice self-discipline, Lord God, and to just strive to be better stewards, servants, persons, laymen, and women, Father God. We want to be better children that represent you and your kingdom and just and just want you to get the glory out of our lives. And so we just ask and pray that as we join together this hour, we pray that you would speak to us. We pray that you would convict us. We pray that you would mature us. We pray that you would build us up. We pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding. We pray that you would touch our hearts. We pray that this time of gathering, this time of breaking bread, this time of fellowship and communion, Lord God, would be pleasing in your sight and that you would help us in this hour that we're going to spend or so, that you would help us to become better to grow in wisdom and stature and knowledge and understanding, Lord God. Help us 
as we gather together this hour. Hide us all behind your cross and show us where this word that you have for us tonight can apply to our lives. We're not looking for anyone else, Lord God, but the uh, psalmist said years ago, it's me, Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, not my mother, not my father, but it's me, Lord. It's each one of us collectively and individually. We want you to speak to us tonight. And as you speak to us and we apply it to our lives, we pray that others will see the fruit that you are producing in us and that it would encourage someone else, Lord God, to log on and to search your face and to search, seek and search your will and that you will get the glory out of their lives also. Help us, Lord God, to be better, to mature and to grow in you. Perfect that which concerns us. Get everything out of me that you place within me and so much more. Do what only you can do in this hour. Be the God of all creation. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, God bless you again. Thank you all for joining. We are ready to get into this word. I don't know about you, but this um, study on taming the tongue, 30 days to um, taming the tongue, what you say and do not say can help your relationships. That's all relationships. Amen. So we have talked about four particular tongues. We talked about the lying tongue. We talked about the flattering tongue. We talked about the manipulating tongue. And within that lying tongue, we talked about different tongues, the tongue that deceives, amen, the, the tongue that, that, that exaggerates, amen, and the tongue that tells have truths, amen. And tonight, I want to talk to you about the hasty tongue the hasty tongue amen we live in a world my brothers and sisters where uh, uh if you recall we done a study i believe last year it was last year the middle of last year we done a couple of months study on um addicted to hurry i don't know if y'all remember that i hope you all do but we we talked about addicted to hurry and we live in a we live in a world today well, we are addicted to hurry. We want to we wanna live the fast pace. We want to do things uh, uh, in a hurry. If I was to ask the question today, how many of you, and you, you can be honest, this is no judgmental question, but this is just to get our mental mechanisms clicking and us evaluating ourselves and, 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 and seeing where we at. So, 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 so if I was to ask the question today, how many of you, hear me here, Sister Sandra, how many of you, hurry to do something today? How many of you rushed to get something done? How many of you rushed or hurried to get somewhere? How many of you rushed to get through the work day? You just wanted the work day to be over with. You tired, kept looking at your clock, don't want to be here. You know it's 60 minutes in an hour. You know it's 60 seconds in a minute. You know you got to be at work at least eight hours or maybe four hours if you're part-time. Uh, uh, some of you may work 12-hour shifts, but how many of you wanted the day to be over with? You kind of wanted to rush through this day. It was your typical Tuesday. Uh, you just wanted to kind of get off work and relax and you wanted to get through the day. How many of you find found yourself, if you can think back and just take a retrospective look, how many of you feel like you kind of rushed something today? You rushed to do something today. You rushed to be somewhere today. Uh, 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 um, uh, many of us, hear me here, we live this rushed life. We live this fast-paced life, amen? Um, um, and if the truth be told, especially growing up as a kid, for us, fast meant fun. Uh, if, if, if you went fast, it was fun. I have a nephew now that I think about that, my sister's son, um, AJ Akeem, I call him champ. Uh, um, especially as a kid, uh, he, I mean, well, at least still is a kid, but as a younger kid, Two, three, four years old, five, six years old, he'd get in the car with me. Hey, Sister Carla, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Hey, Sister Demetra, God bless you. Thank you for joining. He'd get in the car with me. And he'd say, Uncle, push the gas. And I push the gas and roll. And he just fall back in the seat. He just fall like he just loved to go fast. Amen. He came up here uh, um, a couple of years ago or so. And uh, 
uh, jumped on the back of my motorcycle and he holding on, go fast, uncle, go fast. He was just addicted to fast, to, uh, addicted to speed. He was addicted to going fast. There's something, hear me here, about going fast that we like. Even as kids, you remember we played games where you had to be fast, high and go see, or dodgeball, or we played sports, amen, that required for us to, 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 to run at a certain speed, to, to, to be fast, football and, and track and even basketball and swimming and things of that nature. You had to have a certain type of quickness about you, a certain type of speed, amen. But we learned, hear me here, in that book, Addicted to Hurry, that oftentimes what we have is an unhealthy addiction to fast, to fast pace, an unhealthy addiction to rush, an unhealthy addiction to get things done. And so we talked about in that book, and I'm just trying to tie these together for context. We, we talked about in that book, one of the first things that we talked about is that what happens is that sometimes speed becomes an idol to us. And we start to idolize speed because we want everything to be rushed. We want to rush everything. We want it, we, we, we want it when we want it right then and we got to have it. We don't want to wait on nothing. We have this popcorn mentality. We, we have this microwave mentality. We want it to pop real quick. We don't want to put it in the oven and let it simmer. But oftentimes, rushing and being hasty can get us into trouble. Not only, hear me here, in our actions, because we have, we've hurried into some things. Hear me here. I'm going to tie this together, but hear me here. We've rushed to do some things that we shouldn't have rushed to do. We hurried, hear me here, to help some people that really didn't appreciate our help. Hear me. We rush to get through some things and some phases and some stages in life if we would have just taken our time. When we look back at it, if we would have just taken our time, we would have learned a lot more. We would have grown a lot. We would have been further in life if we would have just taken the time to take life as it was and go through the stages of life. But some of us rushed the life and we experienced some things in life at a younger age that we shouldn't have experienced. And it wasn't because we wasn't raised right. It wasn't because we didn't come from a good family. It was simply because we wanted it when we wanted it. We had to have it when we had to have it. We wanted to rush through life. And because we rushed through life, we ended up in some places and with some people and in some situations that we should have not ended up in. Because oftentimes rushing, hear me here, leads us to places that we do not want to be. I was looking at some um I was looking at some some um quotes um on 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 on, on rushing and 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 haste today. And it said, Sister Casper, one of the hosts, one one of the um quotes said, do nothing in haste. Look well to each step, and from the beginning, think what may be the end. Don't rush to do something. Look well at each step, and from the beginning, think what may be in the end. Another deal about being hasty said, take time for all things. Great haste makes great waste. Woo! Great haste makes great waste. What does that mean? Oftentimes, when we rush into stuff without thinking about it, without calculating our steps, without calculating our thoughts, when we rush into stuff that we think we want, great haste, and we're hasty to do it, we waste a lot. There's a lot wasted. Unreasonable haste is the direct road to error. Woo! One saying said, one, Unreasonable haste is the direct road to error. Unreasonable haste is the direct road to error. In other words, we can rush into error. We can rush 
into bad situations. We rush and we err, hear me here, we, we err by default because we haven't taken the time to slow down. But what I want to talk to you tonight, the reason why I was talking about our actions and how they, how, how, how rushing in our actions can lead us into error. It can lead us into bad, peculiar, unfavorable situations. Just as your word, I mean, just as our actions can lead us into error, hear me, or error, hear me here. Our tongue, a hasty tongue, can also put us in some bad situations. A hasty tongue, hear me here, can do more damage than we want if we speak without thinking first about what we're saying. This is why the Bible says, hear me here, do you see a man, I'm going to say, or a woman, who is hasty in his or her words. There is more hope for a fool than for him or her. Proverbs 29 and 20 says, do you see a man or a woman, paraphrasing, that is hasty in his or her words? The Bible says that a fool is better off than you. Because what it is saying right here is that a lot of us have the propensity to speak before we think. Mm. A lot of us do not think, well, I'm going to say not a lot of us, oftentimes. We as humans, we as, 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 as people have the propensity, hear me here, to speak before we think. And so our mouth, hear me here, actually moves faster than our mind or our thoughts. And so we just have this hasty tongue. But hear me here, the communication of the hasty tongue is done too quickly to be thoughtful or wise. A hasty tongue is whenever we communicate too quickly. And when we communicate too quickly, our communication is not, it doesn't happen by, by it doesn't come from, from, from our thoughts, rather. It doesn't come, our, 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 our words are not wise because we're just so quick to speak. And when this happened, hear me here. When this happens, we oftentimes end up saying something that we shouldn't say, and we or we end up offending others. Hmm. Without even evaluating the situation. Have you ever been around someone, whether it's your 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 friend or or, 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 or someone you were just in a group or something, or your spouse, or one of your siblings, or, or, or one of your aunties or uncles, or even you yourself, and something was saying it, and the person just said it without any thought, and you sit back and was like, oh my God, no, she did not just say that. I can't not believe he just said what he said. Oftentimes, that person has said that, hear me here, because they have not taken the time to think about what they're getting ready to say. And when that happens, hear me here, we oftentimes offend people because we are not taking the time, hear me here, to calculate our words. And it is important that we calculate our words in what we say. We've all done it. Hear me here. Every last one of us have said something that has offended someone. All of us have at one time or another, multiple times, been hasty with our tongue. We've used our tongue in a haste manner and said things that we shouldn't have said. 
Let me give you scripture. The Bible says, for in many things we offend all. And if any man offend not in word, that man is a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. James said, we all said something that we shouldn't have said that offended someone. He said, if you have not done that, you are saying that you are a perfect man, that you can control your tongue and you can, and, and, and if you can control your tongue, then you can control your whole body. That's James 3 and 2. But because we can never be totally aware of all the sensitivities of others, hear me here, we must, again, here we go back to what I was telling you before, we need the Holy Spirit to direct our speech in a way that does not tap into the pain of others. Let me, let me, let me give you, let me give you a, a let me give you a example. You go home or you have that aunt or that mother or that grandmother and they tell you, when are you going to get mad? Not even thinking about it. Don't really know the situation. They just know you're not married. Hear me here. And so they say, when are you going to get married? Not knowing that you've been struggling with some things. You've been seeking a man or a woman to marry. You've been asking God to send you someone. You thought you had found someone and that someone wasn't whom he or she said they were. And so you thought that person was the one that you were gonna marry. And when they asked you that out of haste, without thinking, they caused you some type of pain. Let me go deeper than that. What happens when you are married and then they say, when are you going to have me some kids? When are you going to have me some grandkids? When are you going to have me some nieces and nephews? Not knowing that you and your wife or you and your husband have been trying for years and there's some biological uh, um, 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 imbalance there that's not um, letting your eggs connect. And they open up this wound, hear me here, because they hastily speak without thinking. See, this is what I mean about just asking questions or being intentional when we ask questions. Because if we ask questions out of haste, we can end up causing pain to other people unintentionally. That's why we need to be calculated in our words. We have to realize that when we speak to people, that everyone has a different level of sensitivity depending upon their experience. But not only do we speak in haste in, in such manners, we also respond in haste. A lot of us respond just like that. A lot of us respond so hastily, hear me here, that oftentimes we don't even give the person the opportunity to finish what they are saying. I just want to, I'm, I'm, I'm not froze. I just wanted that to sit there for a minute because I wanted us to think about that. Oftentimes, we can get so caught up in wanting to voice our opinion that when someone else is seeking to talk, and I've been guilty, when, when someone else is seeking to talk, we cut them off, hear me here, because we have to give a hasty response. And hear me here, the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 13, that he who answers a person without hearing what the person has to say, without fully hearing what the person has to say, or without letting the person finish what they have to say. If you answer a person, hear me here, before they are finished 
saying what they have to say. The Bible said that this is your folly and your shame. The Bible says, shame on you. If shame on us, rather, let's keep this general. Shame on us if and when we respond to someone without letting them finish what they are saying. The Bible says it is folly, it is foolish to answer someone or to respond to someone in the middle of them explaining or communicating with you. You bring shame upon yourself oftentimes, hear me here, because the person may start out making a certain point and may be all the way over in left field but they're painting the picture. And so they want to bring all the information in. But because they're saying something that you or I or, or, or us, we don't feel that pertains to the situation at that moment, we have the propensity or the bad habit of cutting them off in the middle of the conversation. And saying, that's not what I'm saying. And they're saying, wait a minute, let me finish. I'm getting to what you're saying. I just want to make my point. Can we be honest? Have you ever been in that situation to where you were talking to someone and you may have been in a disagreement or you may have even been in agreement? Hear me here. And they're saying something, but they're taking the long way around. They're taking the wilderness around and you're wanting to go straight through the Jordan River. You're wanting the haste to get there. You want to hurry to get there. And so you tell them, no, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. And the person's like, I know what you're talking about. I'm just making my point and I'm going to get there. Woo! And the Bible says this oftentimes causes shame and it's foolish to do this. One of the, one of the worst things that we could do is cut people off when they're talking and trying to explain themselves. Or hear me here. They're talking and you're, and you're, you have to be so so haste in your response that you over talk them. That are, or that you talk over them, sorry. And so now both of you are talking and oftentimes when that happens, especially in relationships, either it's business or marriage or friendships, when that happens, hear me here, and both of you are haste in your communication and in your response, hear me here, you never come to a conclusion. You never come to a compromise. You never come to a resolution because neither one of you are hearing each other. All you want to do is give your response. The Bible says somewhere in Proverbs also, it talks about an apt response. Stirs up wrath. A quick response stirs up wrath. A hasty tongue stirs up wrath, stirs up confusion. But not only do we say things in haste, not only do we respond in haste, hear me here, oftentimes we commit in haste. Oftentimes, we commit to things with our mouth in haste. And one of the worst things that we could do, come on somebody, one of the worst things that we could do and have done is said things before we thought about it, is committed to things before we thought about what we were committing to. And so just because you liked them and they asked you and they knew they could depend on you, you said you would do it and you didn't think about what your schedule looked like. You didn't think about how tired you were going to be. You didn't think about what you were, what you didn't think about the thing that you were committing to, how, how much it was going to drain you or, or asked of you or how taxing it was going to be. Can we be honest? How many of us have committed to things in haste? Ooh, I'll do it. I'll be there. I'll go. Listen, I, I was 
I'm trying to pull myself back from that, but I was the king of committing in haste. Just telling somebody I'll do it. I'll be there. You can count on me. Before I look up, I'm like, man, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Don't. Deborah Pagay in this book says, do not be rash with your mouth. She quotes Ecclesi Ecclesiastics 5 and 2 and says, do not be rash with your mouth. Let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. Because we don't only do it with others whom we see face to face. We also can be rash and hasty in our communication with God. And because we are in a particular situation, hear me here, we say something like, God, if you get me out of this, I'll do this. And we were quick to say, we were quick to make a vow to God because we were in a particular situation. Whenever the Bible clearly tells us, do not make a vow to God and not fulfill it. But let's be honest, how many of us at times, at times, have 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 committed something to God because we were in a particular situation because we were in a tight space because we felt some pressure we said God I'm gonna wake up and do that I'm I'm, I'm gonna start doing this I'm I'm gonna read and and and, and I'm gonna go to church and I'm and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that if you would just do this just help me God and we make these New Year's resolutions and we start writing stuff down in journal without really thinking about what we're doing and saying. God will hold us accountable for our words. That's why the Bible says that you that it is not good to make a vow unto God. God said, I would rather not have you make a vow at all than to make a vow to me and not pay it. Ooh. There's a Bible, there, there's a story in the Bible in Judges, the 11th chapter, starting at the at, at verse 30, that uh, Deborah Pagay uses in this book about a man uh, named Jephthah. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Jephthah had to learn the folly of using rash words. Thank you, Sister Kim, for those scriptures. Jephthah had to learn the lesson of folly of using rash words. One day, Jephthah prayed unto God and he was, he was going to war against the Amorites. And he prayed to God that if God would just give him the victory over the Amorites, that he will offer as a sacrifice the first person who stepped foot in his home. What a crazy, crazy vow to make to God. Because he was at war, because he was going through some stuff, because Jephthah was at a challenging place in his life and he was being attacked, hear me here. He told God, God, if you just give me the victory over these Amalekites, the first person that come through my door, I will give that person unto you. I would offer that person up to you as a sacrifice. Hear me here. Jephthah prayed that prayer to God rashly in a haste to try to get the victory over a situation that he was in. That the first person who walks through this door the first person that steps foot in my house, I'll offer them to, I'll lift them up to you and offer them to you as a sacrifice. And guess who walked through Jephthah's door? His daughter. Jephthah's daughter was the first one to walk into his home and he had to offer his daughter up to the Lord as a sacrifice. And back then, the Bible doesn't say if he offered her 
as a as a as a sacrifice of fire. But back then, people will be laid on the altar and they will be set on fire as a burnt sacrifice unto God. It doesn't say that. Nor does it say if she was doomed to be a virgin for the rest of her life. But because of Jephthah's, hear me here, rash words and commitment to God, his daughter had to suffer. Woo! His daughter had to suffer because he was rash and hasty in his words. And so we can conclude from what we've looked at tonight that when we use harsh or rash words, it can ruin our whole life. It can ruin our lives. It can mess up our careers. It can, it can ruin our relationship. When you just say things without thinking. There are some things that you can take back. But words and time are two things that you cannot take back. Even if we apologize for the words that we say, we cannot pull those words back. Even if we live another 50 years, we cannot get back the time that we've already lived. Your words and your time are two things you can never take back. Once you said it, it's said. And when we have a hasty tongue, hear me here, it becomes a malady. It becomes a malady of our speech. It becomes a malady, a sickening, a, a disease. And so James admonishes us that we should stop, think, and pray before we speak. I'm going to say that again. We should stop. Think and pray before we speak. Now, there are some situations, most situations, a lot of situations that we're in, we're communicating with people and we're having an ongoing dialogue and conversation with another person or with a group of people. Yet still, you should take enough time. We should take enough time to make sure that our words are calculated, to make sure that our words are intentional. Because oftentimes, if not, what will happen, hear me here, we'll become experts at asking for forgiveness for, for something we said. We'll become pros, hear me here, at asking for forgiveness because we said something. And the worst thing that we could do, hear me here, is become a pro at asking for forgiveness because you do not know how to control your mouth or because we said things hastily and rashly and we did not think before we spoke. James said that we should think and we should pray before we speak. It says, wherefore, my uh, beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. James said, let every man, let every woman be quick to hear and slow to speak. But oftentimes, we're slow to hear and quick to speak. James said, no, no, no. You got it backwards. God gave us two ears and one mouth. 
So we ought to listen as twice as much as we speak. I'm going to say that one more time. God gave us two ears and one mouth. Therefore, we should listen twice as much as we speak. Be slow to speak, but quick to listen. Don't let our hasty tongues get us in trouble or in situations or ruin relationships. Hear me here. Because we are so quick to speak. So we have to make an affirmation. Hear me here. We have to make an affirmation when it comes to a hasty tongue. And Dr. Bouquet says that the affirmation is this. I am swift to hear and slow to speak. For the Lord has set a guard over my mouth and he keeps watch over the door of my lips. I'm gonna say that again. We have to make an affirmation that I am going to be swift to hear. I'm gonna be quick to listen and slow to speak. For the Lord has set a guard over my mouth so I can watch my words. And he keeps watch over the door of my lips. We don't have to be fast to speak, quick to speak, rash to speak. A hasty tongue can, will, has, and does ruin relationships of all kinds. And we don't want to speak. Hear me here. Some people say, some people say we, have you ever heard the uh, uh, um, 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 term? We, sometimes we speak out of term. We speak too fast. We say stuff too fast. We're not calculated in our words. And oftentimes when we speak too fast, we end up saying something that we shouldn't hear me here or we make decisions or speak words, permanent words, based on temporary circumstances. And so some of us, because we're tired of our jobs, hear me here, because we're tired of our jobs, in the midst of an altercation or a disagreement at work, we tell them, I'm putting in my two-week notes, I'm out of here. We are so quick to speak. But as you said, Sister Demetra, we have to let the Holy Spirit take our tongue, guide our tongue, and dedicate our tongue to the Holy Spirit. Our tongues must be an instrument for the Holy Spirit so that our words, here, here, here's that word again, can be calculated, be quick to listen, and slow to speak. We must take the time, hear me here, to weigh our words before we release them. Sometimes I, I like to say things uh, in repetition, so I'm going to say that again. We must take the time, not we should, we must take the time to weigh our words before we release them. And if you're not taking the time, hear me here, to weigh your words before you release them or before we release them, hear me here, we're speaking too fast. We're speaking too fast. We need to weigh our words. What is, if I say this, how is this going to help or worsen the situation? If I say this, 
how is this going to help me or harm me? If I say this, how is this going to help or harm the other person? Because oftentimes, hear me here, we can be in a situation to where someone is seeking counsel from us. Someone is seeking our input. And they're telling us about a situation that they're going through. And because, hear me here, maybe we dealt with that situation. Or because we see it through our lens and not necessarily through their lens, we don't really have any empathy and we just state something. You ought to leave them. You ought to get rid of them. You ought to walk away. We say things so quick because we actually took the, hear me here, we took the focus off of them and put it on us now. And when we do that, we're haste. We're quick to give our own personal opinion without thinking, you know what? I'm not this person. I don't, I don't really know how that deals with them. I've been through that, but their situation is different from mine. I would never, ever, no, never tell somebody to divorce or leave someone in a marriage unless they are being physically abused. Now, there are some situations where you need to leave. That's just what it is. But just because you're having a disagreement, I'm not the one that's going to tell you just to leave. Because I don't feel about that person how you feel about that person. But so often, we're quick to say, leave him, leave her, walk off the job, sell the house, quit school, move here. Move. We're so quick to give a rash answer without really thinking about the situation, without just simply telling the person, hey, have you prayed about it? Have you, have, have you given it some thought? See, that's what listening does. Listening helps us to ponder what we are getting ready to say, to ponder our thoughts. But again, we live in this fast paced world where we have to say what we want to say. We have to get it out right now. But James tells us that we need to stop, we need to think, and we need to pray. Ponder what you are going to say. Be calculated and be intentional in what we are going to say so that we are aware of what we are saying. Have you ever been into an argument with someone or a disagreement or anything like that? And a person says something that may have really offended you, or you may have said something that offended someone else. And that person comes to you and say, you know what? You said this and that offended me. And they say, I didn't say that. Because they were talking so fast and, were, and weren't calculated in their words, they didn't even realize they said it. Or a person comes to you and say, you know what? You said this. And I didn't like what you said. I didn't say it. I didn't say that. That's not what I said. And it is exactly what you said. But because you spoke so fast, because you were so rash and quick in your response, in your verbiage, you didn't even realize that you said what you said. And we end up doing more damage than good. My brothers and sisters, let's be more careful with our mouths. Let's be more calculated with our mouths. Let's be more intentional with our words. Let's stop. Let's pray. Let's think. Let's ponder. Let's be quick to listen and slow to speak. Lord God, I come before you this hour just thanking you for this word that you blessed us with tonight. 
For you told us in your word that every man and woman has offended at one time or another from using haste and rash words. And so we ask and pray that you would forgive us for being so quick to speak, so rash to speak. And in your forgiving us of our actions, we pray that you would help us to be more calculated, to be more intentional, and to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Help us to use our words wisely. Help us to speak at a rhythm and in a way that brings glory to your name. Let not the folly of our rash communication and response and commitment with our words bring us shame, but help us to speak in season with learned, skilled, wise words that will lift up and not tear down, that will help and not harm, that will glorify you and not be displeasing to you. Help us with our rash response and communication. Perfect everything which concerns us. So we leave this place but never from your presence. We thank you for these teachings. We thank you for bringing us together to to, to break bread week after week to focus on this tool that you've given us to glorify you. Help us to be better stewards of our mouths, of our tongue, of our communication, of our words. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have gotten something out of this message tonight. I know I have been both encouraged and convicted. And I will personally tell you that I am going to seek to be a, a, a better listener and uh, not be so quick to speak. Amen. Um, so I pray that you all are up for the challenge. And I pray that you all are getting something out of this. And um, self-discipline is necessary. Self-discipline is necessary. We need to evaluate ourselves. And I believe this teaching with the tongue is helping us do just that. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May the Lord continue to perfect that which concerns you. Go in peace. Serve God. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. God loves you just as you are. See you all next week. God bless you. Amen. you to know that your days of being faithful and fruitless have come to an end for the glory of the Lord has risen up on you.